Bienvenue tous. Welcome to this edition of Reporters, our showcase of the best work by our own correspondents from across the world, right here on France 5 Camp. This week, we go to the biggest island in the Caribbean and still the most controversial, Cuba. Perhaps the last bastion of communism. It's 50 years since the revolution that saw Fidel Castro take power. Today, Cuba, like its iconic leader, is in decline. After a long illness, Castro has handed power to his brother Raul. But like uh, Castro, Cuba itself is in decline with a declining economy. It's making life, frankly, a misery. Cuba still lives with an embargo on trade, with a giant on the doorstep, the USA. Freedom of expression is also very restricted. And like every nation in the global downturn, Cuba is suffering, with ordinary Cubans getting hurt more than most. Our reported version here has hit the road from Cuba, in Cuba, from the capital Havana to Santiago near Guantanamo Bay. She discovered many Cubans ready for change, with or without the Castros. 47 years of North American embargo. That's the pretext Cuban authorities use to stifle any opposition movement and justify their ban of free speech. According to human rights associations, over 200 opponents to the regime are in jail. Others have found a means of expression which for now is tolerated, like Yoani Sanchez, international renowned blogger. She's not allowed to leave the country and her site is not accessible within Cuba. I behave as if I were free. It's not really the case, but I try. Thanks to an informal network, this Cuban blogger is able to publish her texts abroad, but nothing filters into Cuba. My goal is to criticize the education my children are getting, which is based on ideology. To criticize the fact that hospitals lack sufficient means and structures without anyone telling me to shut up because it's free. I dream of a Cuba where people don't pay for these services by giving up their rights to freedom. In Cuba, we have a real life and an underground life. The underground life is growing. Cubans have learned to live with a mask and distinguish what can be said in public and what can be said in private. Then you have the black market, which allows us to buy certain things we wouldn't be able to get otherwise. It enables us to survive. The same thing goes with information. People have learned to create their own private freedom. They found ways to circumvent the system and its numerous prohibitions. It's become part of their daily lives. Even moving is not a free choice. This TV is an antique. I've repaired it at least a thousand times. Like thousands of families, Lazar and his relatives live in an old building at the center of Havana. The apartment is free, but over the years, it's fallen to pieces. Finding the material is difficult. The state sometimes gives out small bags of cement. But for the rest, we're on our own. The building is really falling down. Do you want to stay here your whole life? <laughs> There's really no other choice for me. Could you imagine if I could live somewhere else? <laughs> My aunt is the owner here. But we can't sell, because the real owner is the government. The neighbor is a bit more cautious with her statements. You know, we live well here in Cuba. I'm happy living here. I mean, yes, it just needs a bit of repairing. That, that's all. Most importantly, Lazar wants to make sure he can provide his daughters with a better future. He hopes they'll be able to earn a salary according to the work they do and live wherever they want without having to ask for permission. Half of the Cuban population is under 25. They're amongst the best educated youth of Latin America. They're being tasked with the job of keeping the revolutionary flame alive. But many have their eyes glued on the horizon and wonder if one day they'll be able to leave the island. Well, uh, correspondent Virginie Hertz is here now to talk uh, more about uh, that report. Cuba, Virginie, not the easiest place for a journalist to go about his or her job. How did you manage to make this report happen? 
Mm -hmm. Well, I went there with an uh, official uh, journalist visa and I, wasn't, I didn't have to hide myself and I was pretty surprised because I wasn't really checked or followed uh, what things that can happen when you are disguised as a tourist. Uh, I could even meet two opponents of the regime and when I told them that I was surprised that it was so easy to meet them, they told me that it was part of the game and that it's a, it's a good reason for the regime to say that See, uh, we are well. The opponents are, are free to speak, and there is no problem of talking to them. Um, now you have to uh, take in mind two things: that uh, all over the country, there are people are members of the CDR, which is uh, the Committee for the Defense of the Revolution, uh, which are the ears and the eyes of the regime, and they are more uh, or less monitoring what is uh, happening around their areas. Uh, I didn't feel that uh, they uh, them being really there, but uh, twice it happened to me when I was uh, filming in the market that they came to see me and asked me to stop filming, and they told me that. I needed special permit, but apart from this, uh, there was no ban at all. Uh, now you have to take into account, as I said in the, in the report, that uh, 50 years of uh, Castro regime makes that people are very cautious about uh, what they say and uh, that they practice a lot of uh, self-censorship and that it takes a lot of time uh, to make them feel comfortable and say uh, things that they really want to say and that finally uh, it's most of the time where they don't think that you are filming that they will really say uh, true things. There's change in the USA with Obama, his great mantra, change, yes we can. Is, is that kind of rubbing off in Cuba? Are people looking for change? Oh yeah, the, well there is a lot of expectation with uh, the new uh, the new uh, uh, U.S. Pre uh, president. You have to keep in mind that uh, uh, the uh, uh, U.S. embargo on Cuba is one of the pretexts or one of the reasons uh, uh, why, or, or at least the regime says it, because of the of the embargo that uh, civil and political liberties are uh, restricted in Cuba. So a lot of people think that if this relationship uh, is going to uh, to be better, maybe the th uh, change can happen. And uh, it is true that Obama said uh, that he would be ready to ease the conditions of the embargo and especially ease the family uh, travel possibilities. On the other hand, uh, Raul Castro said that he would be ready to uh, meet Mr. Obama. And ironically, he said on a neutral ground like Guantanamo uh, that he was ready to, to uh, make uh, exchanges of prisoners. So now a lot of hope uh, has risen with this uh, election. But globally, when to, you speak to people, uh, they are pretty pessimistic on the overhaul. Uh, they said that, for example, uh, Raul Castro, when he started his mandate, uh, for example, uh, uh, lifted the ban on uh, cell phones, DVD players, internet, but most of people don't have the money to access to all these goods. And uh, all these changes uh, stop, have stopped since, uh, since a few months. So people really, uh, some people told, or most of people told me when I talk about changes, they say, we are hoping for, or we are uh, waiting for natural uh, changes, which is to say that they're just waiting that uh, their leaders, we, which are who are pretty old, are just going to disappear, and then they think that sh things can really change. So people looking for a better deal, more money to spend, and changes that give them a better life. Yeah, well, when you when you consider all the conditions, the the the, the, the fact that people are not really free to talk uh, most of the time, they don't don't. Uh, talk about politics, but it seems really that they are concerned on the economical issues and they just want to have more freedom uh, in this uh, in this area. Virginie, thank you for that. That was uh, Virginie Hertz who uh, did that report for us uh, from uh, Cuba. You've been watching reporters here on France 9 Cat. Stay with us.